Casey Elliott, thank you so much for being with us all the way from Utah, daughter of Cindy. Well, thank you. I live here now, but um, I'm from Utah, so we'll, we'll <laughs> Thank you in. for being with us. <sighs> thank you. And thank you to everyone for listening to all of us today. I feel like we're all sort of comrades in arms back here, um, having undergone so much of the same, ex- so many similar experiences, all too similar and all too, all too common. Um, uh, it is impossible to think of a way addiction has not impacted every aspect of my life since the very beginning. Um, my parents divorced when I was just under three years old, and during their separation, my infant sister and I lived with my mother and her new boyfriend. When my father found out that my mother's boyfriend was involved with drugs and suspected she too was using, he threatened to fight her for custody. A few days later, my mother knocked on my father's door with a suitcase and my sister and I in tow and said, if you want them so badly, they're yours. If addiction is not a brain disease, I don't know what else to call it. For years, my sister and I would see our mother on weekends, then only on holidays and birthdays, until ultimately years passed without a word. Birthday card money was used to buy groceries because paid checks had been used to feed the habit. Custodial visits meant spending the weekend alone in an empty house. As of today, I have not seen my mother in over 10 years. I wonder what my life would have been like if, almost 30 years ago, the stigma of addiction did not exist, treatment services could be accessed without barriers, and recovery could be undertaken with dignity. However, my experiences with a loved one struggling with a substance use disorder are not all sad. When I was eight years old, my father would start dating the woman who would help raise my little sister and I as her own. Although my, mo- my stepmother struggled with alcoholism until after I had graduated college, she has now been sober for almost six years. A testament that recovery is entirely possible when individuals have access to necessary resources. It almost goes without saying that care needs to be signed into law as soon as possible in order to provide services to those who need it most. It is my hope that this groundbreaking legislation is just the first step of many other pieces of legislation to come and that addiction continues to be addressed in comprehensive, meaningful ways, both here in our nation's capital and in communities throughout the country. Thank you. Casey, you did a really lovely job. You're a wonderful advocate, and I'm sure your your moms and your dad would be very, very proud. 